We even shouldn't be even overburdened about. So we tell them, don't sweat that. Don't worry about that. Now, when we get to the meat of our text, because when he rose in the verse number eight, since he tells him in verse number seven, you don't need to know that. Don't worry about that. He said, in other words, he says, but at the beginning of verse number eight, don't worry about that because you got something better. You don't need to sweat that. Isn't that something? Don't we always look at something else and be concerned about that instead of relishing the better stuff we already have? <laughs> Save me to that. Now, so he says, he says, he tells him, he tells him, he says, but you shall receive power. Don't worry about God's business as it relates to that. He said, but you're going to receive some power. But you shall receive power when? After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, semicolon, and you, ye shall be witnesses unto me or for me or about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Look at verse number nine, just for, just for reading's sake. And when he had spoken these things, I like this. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, while they were looking at it, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. They said, while they were standing there, after he had dropped this last piece of information on them, he kind of like beginning to just float up. He just began to float up. And the Bible says, and what happened was, he got so high, a cloud just opened up. As if the door of heaven said, come on in. Or come home, son. And the cloud opened up and received him out of their sight. That would be enough to get anybody mesmerized. That's why the next verse said they were just standing there looking. They're in awe. Now, that would have got me. And the angel came down as if to say, we see that all the time. So why y'all standing there? Didn't you hear what he said? Get yourself to Jerusalem like he told you and wait for the promise. Say amen to that. Now, that's a whole nother teaching. But what we want to look at tonight, what actually happens when the Holy Spirit comes in or like the Bibles may say rest on a person or we like to say being filled or baptized in. What actually happens when a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit and what is that baptism for? Say me to that. Now, go back to verse number eight. He says, but you shall receive power. But, indicating, don't worry about the, that verse. Concentrate on this. But you shall receive power. You shall receive power. He tells them you shall receive power, meaning that um, uh, uh, anytime the Bible mentions the word receive as it relates to God doing something or the Spirit of God doing something, or Jesus doing something, that means that something is being imparted. Imparted. It, be, it means something is being imparted. It means something is being given. Uh, so, impartion, imparted has to do with something of very high quality of value being released from someone in authority or someone that has authority to release it. So when he says, but you shall receive power, he's talking about you're going to get this impartation, and the quality of this impartation is, is, is just as good or the quality of this importation is the result of the person who works with the company or who has the authority to release this to you. It's kind of like on payday. There's only one person in the company release checks because they have the authority. So when you get paid, they impart your pay to you. Say me that. I know when we talk about it, we make it sound like it's something mystical, like, oh, there's an importation taking place. Well, it, it's, if the importation take, taking place, the first thing I want to know, what quality is it? What kind of quality is it? Of what quality is it? Because if an importation doesn't come from the right source, it's a low-grade importation. I wish I had a witness. Okay, now, not only that, but it has to be very high quality, and quality also means... Watch this very closely. Something that someone has, not only is it good, but it can be noticed. So you shall 
be imparted with something that people will notice. Exactly. In other words, you what you're about what he said, but what you're about to receive is high quality. And when people see you, they're gonna recognize that there's something different concerning you. See, that's what the that's what a lot of times the church fails to realize about this this baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, and, and really because we don't understand it, we we like a person maybe get baptized in the Holy Spirit. They walk away acting the same way they did before they had it because they don't understand what has taken place. Send me to that. You know what? When you sit down to eat a meal, everybody know after you finish, you ate. You got that look on your face, sleepy in your eye. And for a lot of us who overeat, you, 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 you're sticking out by two inches further than you were. I wish I had a witness before you sat down. Say me to that. Say me to that. Any time there is something done to us, whether negative or good, there's, there's always something that can be seen to indicate something has happened. I wish I, so Jesus says, you're going to receive some power, and, and this power that you're going to receive, or this power in the text has to do with this ability that you're going to be, that you're going to receive as a result of what you're going to get, is going to be noticeable. It's going to be noticeable. People are going to see you and say, wow, there's something. When does this happen, Jesus? After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. This, this noticeable thing that's going to happen, this power, this ability, and this, this, ability, this power is not like thunderbolt stuff, but it's to have an unusual ability that you did not have before. It has to do, again, like with the, it has to do with the word of being empowered to do something. And, the, and, and you're empowered by a person who has the authority to release to you this authority. Say me to that. Now, so he says, uh, uh, this, this power uh, has to do with being empowered, uh, and it comes from the Holy Spirit. Remember, Colum I mean, Co Corinthians tells us that we are the hands and we are the feet of God. Say me to that. And we really are because God is a spirit. And every spirit needs a body in which to inhabit in order to work. All right, yeah. mm -hmm. That's why you don't want the devil to get in. Because the devil is a spirit. He ceases to be able to function unless he has a willing participant. God, is, it, God ceases to be able to function if you're not a willing participant of receiving of his spirit. See me to that. Now, so then he says... Now, so when we look at this idea of, of power and being empowered, uh, again, we talk about the empower. The empower has to come from someone in an official authoritative position uh, or has the legal power to transfer this empowerment. Say me to that. So now, now, you, now, you, now you see what Because Jesus told him earlier, he says, if I don't go... The spirit will not come. Say, but if I go, I will have the Father send him to you. See now, watch it. So Jesus didn't send the Holy Ghost because the spirit of the, the spirit of God is of God. It was God who sent the Holy Ghost because He's the authority that Jesus is talking about. Say amen to that. Now, 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 now you got to grab this. Grab this. What makes me so important to God that of all the authority he has, which is on the universe, over the universe, the middle universe, the upper, upper universe, hell, below hell, everything, all the authority God has, all the legal right he has, which is all the legal right, right? He chooses us to impart his spirit. The most inconsistent thing he ever created the most the most unexplainable thing he ever created that's why some says who is man that you are mindful of him what did, what is what is it with these because it sounds like an angel talking he said because like when we mess up you quick to give us the but them they're never the same one second from the next 
Then when you give them your power, they turn their back on you and abuse it. I wish I had a witness. So he said, so he said, so he says this, but, but, but uh, he said, after that, when his power comes, now, so we have to investigate this power a little bit, right? Write this down. In Matthew chapter 28, 18, we talk about this authority, right? Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, he says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power, translated authority, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Why is that important to us? It's important to us because Jesus wanted them to know that where the power had been split because of what Adam did, say amen to that, now is reunited back in him. He says, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. It's mine. I reclaim it. Say amen to that. Now, and then in Luke 10, 19, write that down. Luke 10, 19, right? So Jesus says, in, in, in the earthly speaking, I, I can disperse this authority because it has been given to me. In Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all, and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Say amen to that. Now, so, now you see why he was telling his apostles, don't worry about how Israel is going to be set up and what God's going to do with the kingdom of Israel. You got something better. But you shall receive power, ability. You have, those of you, you are of the church. The church has been given the Holy Ghost, say amen to that, this, this, this ability to do exploits in the earth that people should notice. Say amen to that. Then, 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 because when we read the book of Acts, that is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Why did the church in the books of Acts, in the book of Acts, have so much Holy Spirit activity and the church of the day has none? None. You could say unity and oneness, that, that would be a result. But you know what? They believed. People who believe do crazy things. People who believe can receive of God all he has. That's the only answer you have for the church of the day. We don't believe. We say we believe. But we really don't believe. Because when, when I really believe something, Nothing can change my mind or my perspective about it. Not an election, not who's ever in power, whoever left power. It don't matter because I don't believe in that. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that the church will never come to a belief, not only in God, but what God has given us until we are put in a position where we have to trust God only. We ain't there yet. He's been bailing us out a lot of times. Say amen to that. Especially us. We used to trust God. But when, when we call ourselves getting free, we depended on what God used to free us instead of trusting him. I wish we had anything. So he says in the text, but you shall receive power when? You, no, no believer has the ability to do what God wants until after the Holy Ghost is come upon them. He says you're going to receive some power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you or rest on you or come in to you. That's what, they, that's what the actual text means. You're not going to have this ability. Now, now so, so we, look at, we look at these guys now. We look at these guys that have been positioned to receive this power. Say amen to that. Right? They, they, one, one was a tax collector. Say amen to that. Most of them was fishermen. Say amen to that. One, uh, well, Judas didn't make the cut, but before he hung himself, he was a thief. Say amen to that. 
Uh, so you got, you, got, you got some fishermen in there. You got some thieves in there. You got Peter who could never walk straight, always backing up on his witness's testimony. And you got Matthew who was a tax selector. You got Luke who was, I guess, some kind of bootleg shade tree doctor. You got uh, the rest of them. So, so, so they really, uh, uh, in, in today's society, they would be, they would be considered kind of low-class people. Same into that. There were, there were no kings in that group. Were there? There was no governors, no princes, none of that in that group. Same into that. And so, but, but Jesus, Jesus he, he, he rallies together these 12 misfits that come from all different walks of life. Same into that. Some, still, some had racial problems and some were prejudiced and some, they had all kind of things going on. But he tells them, you're going to receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, there's going to be something different about you. I wish I had a witness. They walked with Jesus three years, and they made bad choices. They questioned him about the wrong thing. I don't know how many times he told them, how long must I suffer with y'all before you get it? They were slow to learn, too. They were slow to learn, too. They were slow to get it. They were slow to believe. He said, but you're going to receive some power. This ability that you're going to receive is going to make you different. See, in the church today, they say we, we say we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but we're still acting just like we used to act. Our, our talk don't change. Our walk don't change. The things we say don't change. The people we associate don't change. Nothing changes to indicate there has been a submerging of us in and being engulfed in the Holy Ghost. Woo! So he says, <laughs> so he says, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, all right? So, okay, God, okay, Christ, we, we, we get it, we get it, we get it, we get it. This power uh, after the Holy Ghost is upon him, but what is it for? What is this ability for? What are we supposed to do with it? Huh? There it is, it's in the text. Be a witness. You can't witness for me without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You don't have no power. You have no ability. You may give your testimony, but the baptism of the Holy Ghost wants to produce something bigger because people need to see something bigger so they'll be drawn to the one who gave you the bigger. I wish I had a witness. See it? See, now watch this. Watch. Say a minute there. If, some, if somebody could see me operating bigger, they're going to want to know why. And then there'd be an opportunity for me to blow Jesus' horn, not mine. Say a minute that. But Jesus' horn. So he says, and ye shall. Look at, look at, the, look at the, 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 the confidence of the talk in the te text. And, but you shall receive power. And you shall be witnesses. In other words, when this happens, you can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. And you shall be witnesses. Now, the word witnesses, witness in the text is very much important. It has multiple meanings. I won't we with all the, the Greek thing of it, but it has to do with being able to testify and interpret what God wants to say. That's like teaching or preaching, whatever the case may be. It has the idea of being a martyr. Say amen to that. Somebody who's killed or uh, abused of somebody. The power. The power's going to give you the ability to die for me, if need be. Or to do this for me. Come on. See? You see what I'm saying? Now, so now, when we talk about witness, so we have to kind of now, we kind of have to kind of scroll through the scriptures a little bit to see if there's any evidence of somebody witnessing after they got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, the first person you see actually stepped to the forefront to be a witness is Peter. Amen. After he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says he stepped up and preached a sermon, and over five plus thousand people came to the Lord. Now, you go back some days later, go back to 50 days prior to Pentecost, and this boy was cutting people ear off, lying around the campfire. What happened between the campfire and Pentecost? The Holy Ghost dropped on him, 
Say amen to that. And 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 he was so he was so he was so different that he began to expound on scripture like he had been back there in Genesis. And all was happening to him was the spirit of God in him was using him as a mouthpiece to interpret what God wanted to be said. When thou converted, strengthen the brethren. Now watch this, watch this. So you see me preaching and, and 5,000 men and women come to the Lord. That's one way of witnessing, speaking the word of God, foretelling, the, you know, saying the word of God, teaching it when you had no ability to do that from the beginning. When you had no training or anything like that to do from the beginning. Say amen to that. Now, so he says then, so he says, and you shall be, can we find another witness? Go to Acts chapter uh, 9, verse number 10. Acts chapter 9, verse number 10. Let's see if we can find some witnessing other than speaking. See, because witness not only covers the speaking front, it covers demonstration of power front, and it covers all kind of fronts. Say amen to that. He says in Acts chapter 9, verse number 10, this is the story of the synopsis of uh, Paul, who was blind on the road to Damascus, and Ananias. And there are a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias, and he said, Behold, here I am. Next verse. And the Lord said unto him, Arise. Going to a street called Straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one of Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he's praying. He's praying. Next verse. <laughs> he's praying and has seen in a vision you, a man named you, you, coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. He's praying, and I'm, he's seeing you, seeing your face, your features, because cause when you come, he can't be surprised. He's got to be waiting on you. All right. Now what you see now, you see the Spirit of God working on two people Amen. at the same time, doing two different things, but in conjunction, and they involve one another. Right. Send me that. Now Ananias was not supposed to do anything but go to Paul, yes, sir. lay hands on him, that he might recover his sight. Because God don't leave heaven to come lay hands on people. Amen. I wish I had a witness. So he sent one of his disciples. Uh-oh. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Uh-oh. Every disciple ought to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Not some, all. God goes into Damascus and he picks one of his disciples. Ananias wasn't special. He was just one of his disciples. Amen. Can one of his disciples tonight be picked to go do something great for God? Or does he have to look around and say, well, that one don't qualify, that one don't qualify. Let me get that one because he's ready to go. Wow. See? And he said that. Put in, he says, he's seen in a vision. You coming and putting your hand, look at on his head, hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Saw it in a vision. That's the Holy Spirit working to Ananias. God wanted Saul healed of it, so his blindness was not permanent, it was temporary. In order for it to recover, the Holy Spirit had to get into somebody, so, and so they could take him over to Saul. Now, God could have done it miraculously. He could have. But you're going to find that in the age we're in now, miraculous miracles are going to be far and few between. God, Jesus, God and Jesus expects for the church to be their agents of carrying all the miracles and the miraculous things to the world. That's the expectation. You see it right here in the book of Acts, the beginning of the church. So you know the difference. You know Ananias with God. You know I heard about the God, this, that, and the other. And then he said, yeah, I know, but he's a chosen vessel of mine. Go. So Ananias goes over. He says, Saul, it's me, Ananias. He the son. The Lord has sent me to lay hands on you that you might receive his sight. And the Bible said he put his hands on him, and the, and, and, and the blindness fell from his face like scales off his eyes. 
Now, you want to go one better? Paul stayed in Damascus. Say amen to that. Now, this is the Holy Ghost. Now, he got filled with the Holy Ghost in that knockdown. Yes, sir. He got filled with the Holy Ghost in that knockdown. But when Ananias put his hands on his eyes and he recovered his sight, he stayed in Damascus, Damascus for, a few, for a few days, or whatever the case may be. Next thing we know, Paul preaching in the synagogue. Because the power of the Holy Ghost was in him. Preaching in the synagogue. So when you talk about receiving this power, it is no matter of fact, when Paul received this infilling of the Holy Ghost and word got around about it, nobody believed it. Just like they ain't gonna believe when you get filled. And the word was, you know, that guy, we know about that guy. That guy used to come and get us and tie us up and drag us back to Rome and do that, all this kind of stuff. You know, ain't no way he feel with the Holy Ghost. See, when, when the Holy Ghost drops on a person, that what they used to do ceases to do anymore. That's what trips up a lot of folk about the church today. You can't say you spirit feel, but still carrying on like you used to carry on, doing the things that you used to do, act the way you ask. It makes people wonder if you got real thunder. Say amen to that. Amen. You're still getting mad, still cussing people out, still wow. acting crazy, don't want to give, don't want to participate, and then you tell me, I'm spirit filled. <laughs> really? It trips people out, especially young believers. Now, we are living, we are living in some really, not turbulent times. I can say turbulent because ain't nothing turbulent about the time. The same thing happening now that was happening in Jesus' day and was happening before Jesus came. Same thing, because Ecclesiastes said there's nothing new in the sun. I believe the word. The word said there's nothing new in the sun. That means the only thing different is we doing the crazy stuff now instead of people back then. <laughs> Say a minute. <clears throat> so, so, so the idea then, the idea then is, the idea then is that when the Holy Spirit, when a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is a noticeable change that takes place in the life of that person. Matter of fact, when Peter was preaching, you know the people sitting there, and, and when Peter was preaching, all the other guys up there with him, they were acting kind of strange. Everybody was like, them dudes drunk. And it's the middle of the day. And they've been drinking wine. No, we ain't drunk. Not our wine. We are drunk off the spirit, and it's making, it was making them act unusual to the point that it was noticeable by the crowd. But they just didn't understand what was going on with them. So, let's see, let's see if we can tell you. Yeah. So the, the when the Holy Spirit comes, his ministry is, or the purpose of him coming into us, is that we can be effective tools of witnessing for Christ. Effective tools for witnessing for Christ. In word and in deed. In word and in deed. Not just word only. But you notice that everyone in that room that got filled with the Holy Spirit, now they didn't have a church building like we had, say me to that, they still carried on their regular lives. They didn't become evangelist Tootmeyer and proper this, this, and all of that. Peter was still named Peter after he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Say me to that. They didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't give themselves a title. They didn't adopt no kind of fancy name. They didn't put no thing in front of their name like the DDD the, 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 the of the QYK, none of that. They kept their same name that they were given at birth, and they just operated when it was time to operate. They didn't try to catch. See, because, see what happens is, for the, for, the, for the believer today, because sometimes we have not had any type of recognition all of our lives, we crave some type of recognition. And so when we get spirit filled, it's like we, it just behooves us to put some kind of label in front of our name or adopt some kind of position or something. But when we do that, we are using the anointing for personal gain. And that's not why he came. 
He came so that we could be effective witnesses for him or unto him, that, for him. Say me to that. See, you, you, we work for Jesus. Yeah, we work for Jesus. So he says this, so the mission of the Spirit, so that we can, we can uh, uh, interpret the counsel of God in word and in deed. And then he says in the last part of the text, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, we're not in Jerusalem. We're nowhere near Judea. We're nowhere near Samaria, but that's where their world evolved around. If you look on a map in those days, those were, that was where everything was happening. And so basically what Jesus was saying, you're supposed to take this to the end of this nation. To the end of this nation. That's what I want you to be a witness to. Not just in Jerusalem, but I wanted to spread to Judea and, and into Samaria, even unto the uttermost parts of wherever this region, how far this region goes, take it there. Now, for us, it's the same thing. Say me to that. You notice that there's no way the witnessing is supposed to be done around the church. No. No, no, no. It's supposed to be done in the city where the church is. <laughs> and then it spreads from there. Now, now watch it. Since we have so much more mechanized ways of travel than they did, we got trains, we got boats, we got planes, we got, uh, uh, what else we got? Sailboats and cars and uh, bicycles and tri we got We got so many modes of transportation. Say amen to that. Say amen to that. Amen. So that means, so, so if, if Jesus was alive today, he said, you know what I want that thing to do? St. Pete, yeah, I want you to spread it. I want you to be a witness for me to the extremes of the world. That's why America at one time sent more missionaries to different parts of the world than any country on the planet. Witnessing for Christ. Not only in word, but in deed and in truth. So when the Spirit of God comes upon us, it, he comes upon us so that we will be effective witnesses for him and his kingdom so that people will see the tangible evidence of the spirit of God in us and be drawn to Christ. That's what Matthew talks about when he says, let your light so shine before men that they, you ain't got no light, the light of the Holy Ghost. Let your light so shine. Don't, don't do anything to dull the light. Don't do anything that will cause the light. Let your light be illuminated before men that they may witness or see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want them to know you've been spirit-filled. I want them to know you've been baptized in I want you to be able to do things that draw people to you. I want you to look weird because you're spirit-filled. I want you to talk strange because you're spirit-filled. I want you to look at people strange. Because your spirit feel. Because they're going to see that strangeness and then be drawn to me. Not to you. Don't let them see you. Let your light shine, shine so they'll come to me. See? So, so, so the, the, the spirit of God comes in so that we can be as effective witnesses for the kingdom. That's Paul. Paul, Paul gives a help, helps us out, help us out, Paul. What, what he said? Paul says, I was shipwrecked three different times. Why you ain't dead? The Spirit of God. Yeah. Left for dead? Spirit of God. Drink poison and kill me? Spirit of God. Snake bit? Spirit of God. Don't try to get snake bit unless you got faith to believe. Being snake bit, there was, a, there was a, some people on TV one time had a ministry and they're going through the church. That's not a ministry, but the amazing thing was that they actually believe, and they were getting bit by snakes and not being harmed. Okay? But you, 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 you're not filled with the Spirit of God to go get bit by a snake. You're filled with the Spirit of God if you're bit by a snake accidentally, it won't kill you. It won't hurt you. You see? So the Spirit of God, like he told the apostles, in, in order to work for God, 
wait a minute, let me put this. In order to work for Jesus, yeah. who God has given complete autonomy over the church, you need some filling. Mm -hmm. To do anything in the body of Christ, you need to be filled. When, 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 when the believers are filled with the Holy Spirit, really and genuinely filled, that's who we operate by. When we operate by the Spirit of God that we're filled with, there's no confusion among us because we're all operating by the same Spirit. Operating by the same Spirit, you and I can be doing different things, but we will work in harmony because the Spirit in us will work in harmony. The reason there's so much confusion in the church because one person feels, the other person's not. Amen. And the one that's not trying to work with the one that is, and you got two clashes there. You got a clash. I wish I had a witness. There's a clash. So the idea then is, that's why, that's, can, you, can you see God sitting up there in heaven? I need to help these people out because uh, I made them, and I know I know for a fact, if Adam and Eve messed up the garden, they'll mess up earth. Yep. They don't have to, but they will. The only way I can assure that they have the ability to work together, whether they will or not, is for me to get in them. I need to get in her and her and her and him and him and him. If, if, if I get in them and they let me work together with them, they can do it. But as long as one is not and one is, they're going to always be clashes. That's why some homes can't get work, can't work it. You know what I've learned? I don't know how you want to adopt this. This is my own thing. You know what? Marriage is a God thing. Isn't it? I don't care who do it. It's a God thing. And it just makes plain Valdosta country sense. <laughs> to me. That if it's a God thing, I need the spirit of God to pull it off. Same internet. And I, so I'm trying to pull off a God thing without the spirit of God and wondering why it don't work. I don't care how much I love my wife, we can't work it unless we feel. S somebody got to be feel. Because somebody got to know when to shut up, when to not talk, when to not cuss, when to not throw something. Somebody got to know when to just give up and let the other one just rant and rave. They just know it's better to be quiet then they get into an argument because they're crazy over there. I'm telling you. It is, it is so, so, so the, spirit, the spirit of God, watch this, you notice? Look at the text. I mean, I have a lot to say about this tonight. Look at the text. He told only his chosen disciples to go wait in Jerusalem. And the, Holy, the Holy Ghost only comes to specific individuals he's not dropping on everybody he's not coming into everybody he's only coming in to disciples disciples those who have accepted Christ as Savior and have changed and have a change of heart we got a lot of people in the church a lot of folk don't qualify as disciples So the Spirit of God is, like I said before, without him empowering us, we don't have a shot to do what God wants us to do. God wants me to roll out the bed. If I don't have the Holy Ghost in me, I roll out, I'm going to hurt myself. Bad. You see? So we can't do it. He tells me, but you shall, you, you guys, you, you shall receive ability. You're going to be able to do stuff that's going to blow you away. You're going to be able to see things and know things and instruct people in things and, and call things, uh, do all that you don't imagine, that you can't even imagine when you receive power. And we know, we know, we know that that feeling that they got was not just a one-time feeling. It's every time there's a new exploit, there's a new feeling that comes along. Every time God has a new job, there's a, there's a new feeling. Same Holy Ghost, just a new feeling, new baptism. A new boldness is given, like John and Peter call it boldness. You see? So the idea then is, so the Holy Spirit is not just 
around for us to talk about, well, the anointing fell on me, and, and the anointing is all on my life. And if people, according to the text, according to the text, if I am a spirit-filled witness, it's supposed to be noticeable. I don't have to broadcast that I've been filled. I don't have to broadcast it. If I got to walk out there by, you know I'm spirit filled. You know I'm spirit filled. <laughs> Say amen to that. You know, because most people feel they got to talk up and according to the text. This, 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 what you receive is of a, such a high quality imparted to you is noticeable. It's noticeable. Them men drunk. No, we ain't drunk. It's noticeable. You be acting different than normal. You be doing things that are not normal. Different. Di say different. I wish I had a witness. So, so then, so then, so then, so then. Christ, on his way out, established to them, established to his apostle, that they're going to receive this power and what the power is for and where it's supposed to be you say amen to that and 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 because watch it watch it. it maybe it's a good thing that things went the way they were with the way they went last night maybe it's a good thing if you're looking at it from a disciple perspective i don't like to say spiritual because that's a no if you're looking for at it from a disciple perspective because say amen to that whether I'm under Hitler or Edie or me, my trust is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not swat, trust the sweetest frame, but slowly, slow, solely lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. I don't know where you're saying, all other ground is sinking. Sand. See? David said, and as I close, David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Then he says, my help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He shall not suffer my foot to be moved. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He didn't say, I lift up my eyes to Washington, D.C. Now, God may use Washington, D.C. to help a brother out, but my eyes are fixed on him. Not on who he uses, not on what he uses, because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And once again, I dare not trust. I don't care how good it sounds, how good it play on the piano, how good it play on the organ. I don't care how good you do it on scratching the record. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but solely lean and depend on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock. So the Spirit of God comes that we can be effective witnessing tools for the kingdom of God, drawing men and women out of darkness into the marvelous light of Christ. When we start doing that, it's going to be on, 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 on. I could stay here all night just telling you how once the apostles were spirit-filled, how God made sure they had food to eat, how God made sure they had places to stay, how God made sure they had money, how God made sure everything, because all they were interested in was doing his work. Amen? Amen? If you receive that, put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Come on. Hallelujah. That is what happens according to Scripture. When the Spirit of God comes in to a believer or to a disciple, a noticeable
changing, man. To our, to our in, internet audience, thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Great to have you look in on us. Do, do, do really hope that this message has helped you in understanding not only who the Holy Spirit is, but the purpose of him coming in into us and how we are not to use his indwelling presence for self-gain or for monetary gain. He's not for that. He's strictly for the kingdom. You use him properly. I guarantee you, you will have what you're supposed to have, and you will have it in abundance. Amen. Amen. So thank you for tuning in tonight. And as we be, as we get ready to leave you, have a great day tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday. It's been Thursday for the last month. It's going to be a great Thursday because God is still on the throne. Jesus Christ still sits at his right hand. We are still the church of Jesus Christ. And we understand now we have the spirit of God in us. And he wants to use us as effective witnessing tools for the kingdom to the extended parts of the universe. Amen. So God bless you. God keep you. Have a great night. And remember Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. And we'll look for you at our next broadcast. Have a good night. Good night. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Come on, clap it up real good. Clap it up real good. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of announcements while we're doing our offering. Put your, hmm? Okay, um, 